video. Um, I'm just going to do, uh, show you how I do a senior edit, like a, a basic quick um, portrait edit. It doesn't need much retouching. And um, I'm starting with this image. I've already liquefied her body a little bit. She's a little self-conscious about her weight. So I'll do a liquefy tutorial separately. But this is the original image, and this is after liquefying. I just did some subtle um, touching up to her face and her arms um, and her chest area just to take a little weight off of her. Again, um, I don't do this for all my clients, but she is self-conscious about um, her weight and did ask me to kind of slim her up if possible, so I did. Um, and now I'm just going to go through what I would do <clears throat> to edit this image. I processed this in Lightroom with the Tribe Archipelago um, presets. I used Loaf. Um, I'm not sure which one, but I like it because it's got a very vintage film look to it. It's very subtle. So that's what I started with in Lightroom, and this is like my starting image. So it's a pretty good starting point, but I do want to tweak it a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a levels layer here because I feel like it needs to be a little bit brighter, have a little more contrast. I don't want it to be too flat. So I'm going to go and add a levels layer here. And I'm just going to bump up the highlights a little bit here. To have a properly exposed image, I would need to push this a little further and increase the blacks. But I don't really want a black contrasted image. I want it to be a little more matte. And I don't want too many highlights. So I'm just going to push the highlights up a little bit. And this is personal preference, but this is what um, the look I'm going for. So I'm just going to bump up the highlights a little. And then you can see a before and after. Just increasing my highlights made a big difference. Now what I'm going to do is I want to add some texture to the stairs. And a little bit of warmth, a little more color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab um, a texture and layer that on top of my image. I'm going to be using a texture from Jessica Drawson's um, Illuminations textures, the Illuminations 1 pack. So I'm going to go to my finder. I'm going to go grab the texture here. Okay, so I've already chosen which one I want to use. I want to use Goldenrod because I think the tones would be really pretty. And um, it's very subtle texture. It's not too much. So I'm going to go... Back to Photoshop, I'm going to go click on my texture, and then I'm just going to drag this on top of my image. I'm going to move it around a little bit, I'm going to pull it up, and I'm going to actually go switch this from normal to soft light mode, just to see where the texture is falling. I see it's highlighted here, so I'm going to actually drag this over a little bit, so that the highlighted portion of the texture is in the center. And then all I'm going to do is press return or enter to layer it on top. Now, to get rid of the texture portion on her skin and body, what I'm going to get rid of that in a certain way. I'm going to select my brush here. And I'm going to make sure I have my black selected and that the opacity is at 100%. Then I'm going to just select her her face and her clothing to remove the texture. So I'm going to make a quick mask. Um, you can press Q on your keyboard. Um, I have a Wacom tablet I'm using, so I have like a button that I've programmed to, for a quick mask. So when you press Q, and make sure you're black selected, paint on the area you want to remove the texture. So I'm just painting here. And I have mine set to green because... I think the default is red in Photoshop, but I have it set to green because skin tones have red in it, so it's a lot easier to see where you're painting when you're use, painting on skin when you use green. Okay, so and all that it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but um, just a quick paint, and then I'm gonna press Q again, and it's gonna select her. The default settings for Photoshop are to have the inverse selected, so it would select the outer area of where she is, like the part I didn't paint on. I have my settings to where whatever I paint on, when I press Q, it selects that. So you see the little marching ants? You know that that area is selected. Now I'm going to go to Filter. Actually, I'm going to go to Select. I'm going to go to Modify, and I'm going to go to Feather. 
and I'm going to feather the edge by 75 pixels. I have mine set at 75 as my default, and I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and my defaults around here, I don't think you need to go any higher than like 26. I mean, it depends on the texture itself, but you can see what's happening. It's blurring the area that's selected, but it's leaving the texture around her. So I'm going to press OK. All right, so if I turn this filter off, you can see that there's texture on her face here. I'm putting it back on, and it removed the texture from her face. So I removed the texture, but not the color. Now I want to make the color of the overall texture a little more subtle. It's a little too warm for me. In order to do that, you've got to go and rasterize your layer. So I'm going to go to Layer, Rasterize, and I'm going to convert it to a Smart Object. I'm going to select Smart Object. Now I'm going to go change the overall saturation of the, of the texture itself. So make sure your texture layer is selected. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. Now here I'm going to desaturate this texture. And what it's doing is it's desaturating the overall texture, not just a portion of it. I can bring the saturation all the way down if I want, but I kind of like a little of that warmth. So I'm going to leave a little of the saturation in. Maybe a little more. Okay, and then I'm going to press OK. Now, the tricky part about this is that it's actually editing the color of the texture. So once you click OK, you're done. You can't. There's no layer mask. So you're actually changing the, the color of the texture layer. So make sure before you click OK, if you're changing the color, that you like it because you can't go back and mask it off. All right, so here is before I added the texture, and here's after. I love using texture in my images. It gives it a little bit more depth, and um, I just like the grit of them. I, I think it's very film-inspired, and I really like that in my images. So that's why I use texture. Now, I feel like this area is a little bright. I could either go and edit this with a levels layer, or I can mask off of this texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask here. I'm going to go make sure my black is selected here. A black brush and I'm just gonna mask off a little bit like 22% just on her her face just to remove some of that brightness now remember if you're masking off a texture it's gonna remove the texture the brightness and darkness effects and it's gonna remove the color so I don't want to do go too far because I don't want to take all that warmth out of there okay I like that now um, I feel like I need some curves. I need some. Um, I need to bring out some of those darker tones and like the curves in her cheekbones because that texture still even her a little bright. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Q for a, a quick mask again. I'm going to increase the opacity of my brush to 100%, and I'm going to go and just select her this area a little. I'm going to press Q again selected this and I'm going to go add a levels layer. Now what it's doing is only going to affect the area you can see here in the layer mask. It's only going to affect the area that um, I selected. And I'm just going to bring down the blacks a little bit here. Okay, before, after. I like that a lot. Here I think this is a little dark here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and add a curves layer. I'll show you another method of, of darkening an area. I'm going to use a curves layer. I'm going to select my hand up here. And then I'm going to take this and drag it downward. Okay, so it changed the overall image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my curves mask here and I'm going to invert it. Okay, so this is what it was like before. Now I'm going to go take a white brush. I'm going to change my brush here. You can press X, and X will change the color of your brush. And I'm going to go paint on where I want to darken it. So it's only darkening that area right here. It's very subtle, but you'll be able to tell the difference after. Okay, so this is after and this is before. So it's just very subtle darkening, but it did help a lot. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go burn. I know you heard the term dodge and burn. I don't really need to dodge much of her face because she has nice highlights on her forehead, her nose, her cheeks, chin, and chest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go burn the areas that I want to contour her face 
and body with. So I'm going to go zoom in a little. I'm going to use that same curves method. I'm going to go add a curves layer. And I'm going to take my hand tool. And I'm going to go select like her cheek, the curve of her cheek, like the contour. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to go select my mask and I'm going to invert it. And now I'm going to go paint on her face all the areas I want to contour. So here with a soft brush, I use a big brush for this. I'm just contouring her cheekbones a little. Now if you see that you went a little too far, like right here, this is a little bit too much. You can go and paint off. I'm going to reduce this and I'm going to invert my, my pen color, my brush color to black. Then I'm going to go and just paint it off a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to invert it back to white. I'm actually going to go up to like about 80, 69% instead of full hundred percent. And then I'm just going to contour a little bit. I'm going to darken some areas. Zoom in and get the contour of her nose. Just again, this area is a little bit more definition. Her eyebrows. Bottom lip a little bit. And then I'm going to contour here a little bit on the side of her face. And I'm going to darken her chest a little bit down here. All right, her jacket as well. I feel like this needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go and I'm going to increase the opacity here. And I'm just going to darken this. Okay, so after, before contouring, after contouring. It makes a huge difference what contouring the face does. I feel like I can remove some from here on her face. Might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to go and use a black brush and I'm going to paint off a little bit here. Okay. All right. I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I actually feel like I can darken this area a little bit more now because it's still kind of bright and I want her to be the brightest thing in the image. So I'm going to go and add another curves layer and I'm going to use my little hand here. I'm going to just pull this down a little bit more and then I'm going to go invert the mask and then I'm going to go paint on the area I want to darken. I'm going to go a hundred percent with my opacity. Okay, I like that a lot. All right, I already edited another image of her, so I'm going to go compare it to that to make sure they both match. So here's one I did already. This one is a little warmer, but not so much to where they look like different edit, different images, completely different edits. So I think that they're pretty consistent. This one, I think that I could flatten the blacks a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a selective color layer here. Click on this. And then I'm going to go select black and then I'm going to reduce the blacks a little bit. So I'm going to go down to like negative four. So this is before, this is after. I think it's a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go reduce the opacity of my layer here. My blacks are a little softer now. Then I'm going to go back to my texture layer here. I have it at a hundred percent. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reduce this a little bit. I like that better. I'm actually going to reduce the selective color layer a little more just so it softens the blacks a little bit. Okay, so I'm totally happy with the color of the image, the way everything looks. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sharpen it. So in order to sharpen, you have to merge all your layers upward. So you're going to stamp the visible layers to a new pixel layer on top. So in order to do that, it's command or control for Windows users, command for Mac. So you're going to press this keystroke, command, alt, shift, E. Okay. 
Command Alt Shift E is going to merge your layers into a new top pixel layer. Now you can sharpen this layer and it won't affect everything below. So if you screw it up, you can delete it. All right, so I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. It's zoomed in on 100%, so I'm going to go to her face. Okay. And I have mine set at 250. If you hold the hand down, it'll show you before. If you let go, it'll show you sharpened after. I think that's a little too sharp. You can look at this eye. It's a little too much. So I normally leave my radius around 1 and threshold at 10. So I'm going to go down to 200 and see if that's better. Okay, I think that's a nice sharpening right there. It might look like a little much, but it looks really great when it's printed, and it looks really great on social media and websites. So I don't think this is over sharpened at all. Okay, so I'm going to press OK, and that's it. Now I'm just going to go File, Save to save a PSD copy of this image. And then after that's saved, I am actually going to go and save a JPEG copy of this so that I could show my client in her web gallery. And I'm also going to save a PNG copy for web so that I could post it on Facebook. So I save each image, or at least the ones I'm going to post on Facebook, in three different ways. I save a PSD master file, a JPEG copy to show my client, and then I save a PNG size for web if I want to post it online. And I love this image, so I'm going to post it online. So that's a wrap. That's how I would have edited this image. Um, Again, personal taste, you could add more blacks if you wanted to. You could do a cooler edit. But this is a quick edit for me. It took about, I, I kind of drew it out a little bit for the tutorial. But if I would have done this quickly, it probably would have taken me five minutes, which really isn't bad for portrait retouching. So if you have any questions, um, you can comment below the video or send me a PM or post in the group. And I'll answer them as best as possible. Thank you.